physicist who through a terrible accident was gifted with extraordinary powers. Thank you. Dr. Manhattan, as you know, the doomsday clock is a symbolic clock face analogizing humankind's proximity to extinction. I would only agree that a symbolic clock is as nourishing to the intellect as a photograph of oxygen to a drowning man. So many claim that you are in fact God, given that you see the past and the future simultaneously. I can only see my own. Do you remember a man named Wally Weaver? We were both physicists together at the Gila Flats research base. He died of cancer. You're suggesting I was the cause. What about Janie Slater? You think it makes a difference to her? Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we're exploring Dr. Manhattan. Created by writer Alan Moore and artist Dave Gibbons, Dr. Jonathan Osterman, who would become Dr. Manhattan, is a fictional DC character featured in Watchmen. The nuclear physicist transformed into a godlike being following an intrinsic field test gone wrong. In a series that revolved around metaphysical issues, Dr. Manhattan would bring an interesting perspective. The character was partly based on Detective Comics' Captain Adam, who, in Moore's original proposal, was surrounded by the shadow of nuclear threat. However, the writer found that he could do more with Manhattan as a supreme superhero than he could ever do with Captain Adam. With that, in constructing the new character, Moore began to delve into philosophy, nuclear physics, and quantum mechanics. The writer believed that a character living in a quantum universe would not perceive time from a linear perspective, which would influence his perception of life and human affairs. Wanting to avoid a completely emotionless character, Moore sought for Dr. Manhattan to retain human characteristics that diminished as his understanding of the universe expanded. In this video, I'm going to do my best to explain Dr. Manhattan's history, powers and abilities, and his unique philosophy and outlook on the universe that motivates his actions. They are shaping me into something gaudy. Something lethal. Jonathan was born in 1929 Germany to Jewish watchmaker Joseph Osterman and his wife Inga, who was shot dead in front of the boy when he was nine. As a child in America, he planned to follow in his father's footsteps and diligently studied the inner workings of his watches. Although his field would ultimately change, this creation or cultivation of order from chaos deeply fascinated John. He was 16 when the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, an event that changed everything. Confronted with the undeniable facts of the theory of relativity, Joseph declared his profession outdated. Throwing the parts of the watch that John was working on out the window, he urged his boy to study nuclear physics instead. The incident represented a turning point in John's potential future, and foreshadowed Dr. Manhattan's exterior perception of time as predetermined and all things within it as determined, including Dr. Manhattan's own reactions and emotions. Osterman would then attend Princeton University from 1948 to 1958 and graduated with a PhD in atomic and nuclear physics. He chose to do his dissertation on the neutrino theory of light involving sea waves and received a doctorate of philosophy in nuclear physics. In early 1959, he moved to a research base where experiments were being performed on the intrinsic fields of physical objects. There he befriended Wally Weaver and met Janie Slater, a fellow researcher that he would fall in love with. In August 1959, shortly after his 30th birthday, John planned to give Janie the watch he repaired for her, only to discover that he'd left it in his lab coat. When he went inside the chamber to retrieve it, the automatic door closed and locked him in. Unable to open the door and override the countdown, his colleagues watched in horror as John had his intrinsic field removed. Bathed in radiant connective energy, he was molecularly disassembled and officially declared dead soon after. But John refused to die. Over the following months, his consciousness started to regain material form. This began with a disembodied nervous system, a circulatory system, and later a partially muscled skeleton lasting a few seconds. Finally, after using his powers to reassemble his body, John fully reappeared in November. Following his transformation, he began to experience time in a non-linear quantum fashion and was aware of and experiencing all the moments of his life simultaneously. If only you could perceive time as I do. Please let me show you. Ah! 
your mind goes to dark places and you wonder why I keep the worst from you. He was not omniscient, as he remained reliant on his intellect and sensory input to reach a conclusion, but his range of sensory data had been extended exponentially. This was in proportion to a lessening of his emotional capacities, which often led him to arrive at conclusions that greatly differed from those around him. He had increasing difficulty acting in what regular people considered the present moment, leading to many accusations and even public perception that he did not care about humanity. His lack of sentiment, however, was more a matter of radically altered priorities, owing to a colossal, unbridgeable gap of perception between him and the rest of mankind. Miracles, by their definition, are meaningless. Oh, God, John! Only what can happen does Just happen. stop! You're bullshit! Becoming a port of the United States government, he was given the code name Dr. Manhattan, a reference to the Manhattan Project that developed the atomic bomb, no doubt meant to scare America's enemies. He begrudgingly accepted a costume, but refused to use the atomic symbol they gave him, instead choosing a representation of the hydrogen atom. Declaring the simplicity of an atomic nucleus with a single electron in orbit was something that kindled his respect. He discarded the headpiece and etched the symbol on his forehead. If I'm to have a symbol, it shall be one I respect. Since he worked for the US government, Manhattan was actually exempt from legislation that outlawed costumed heroes, but chose to spend much of his time conducting research instead. He is single-handedly responsible for the shift to electric-powered vehicles, and Ozymandias credits him as the cause for the huge leap forward in a myriad of science and technology sectors. As a result, the technology of the alternate 1985 Watchmen universe is far more advanced than the main DC universe. It goes without saying, then, that Manhattan's presence tipped the balance of the Cold War in the favor of the West, but instead of creating peace as everyone had hoped, US foreign policy became more aggressively militaristic. At President Richard Nixon's request, he secured an American victory in the losing Vietnam War. The enemy willingly agreed to surrender in front of what they considered God. You know, if we lost here in Vietnam, I think it might have driven us crazy. You know, as a country. This subsequently allowed Nixon to repeal the 22nd Amendment and serve as president for five terms. Rather than solve world tension, his very existence exacerbated everything, leading to a countdown to a potential nuclear war. And it's no wonder, in the eyes of America's enemies and even some Americans, his range of godlike powers and abilities made him a possible threat for which there was no deterrent. See, at the time, I was misquoted. I never said the Superman exists and he is American. What I said was, God exists and he is American. Due to being exposed to connective energy, John Osterman is now infinitely powerful and invulnerable to all harm, with complete awareness and control over subatomic particles and even neutrinos. This grants him omnikinesis, essentially the power to manipulate absolutely everything. As a result, he doesn't need air, food, water or sleep, and is immortal. Although Ozymandias is the second most dangerous person in the Watchmen universe, as John noted, The world's smartest man poses no more threat to me than does its smartest termite. Due to his training as a watchmaker, he's mastered the power of molecular reconstruction, and with great molecular reconstruction comes great molecular disintegration. I said, leave me alone! He is, for all intents and purposes, a god. As I already mentioned, Osterman perceives time in a non-linear fashion. This means that he sees the past, present, and future simultaneously. He can also grant this atemporal vision to others. While originally limited to only his perception of time, he later learned to view the timelines of others, as well as timelines that were erased or altered. This power can be blocked by tachyons though, which are hypothetical particles that always travel faster than the speed of light, restricting his atemporal vision from probing too far past a certain point. My future is blocked by some kind of temporal interference. I cannot see it clearly. Caused by what? In all likelihood nuclear holocaust. Amazingly, his power of biofission enables him to split and replicate himself and divide his quantum consciousness among the other separate physical forms. He can then bring his sentient copies back into his body without any adverse side effects. He has the power of telekinesis, electrokinesis, thermokinesis, and even photokinesis, granting him the ability to manipulate objects with his mind, generate sparks of electrical energy and heat, and shift the color frequencies of light to make himself appear as he wishes to others around him. Forgive me, girl. Reassembling myself was the first trick I learned. 
didn't kill Osterman. Did you really think it would kill me? He can phase any part of his body through solid matter, reject destructive energy, alter his size, create force fields, and even walk on the surface of the sun. And not only could he teleport himself and others at will by warping space around him, but his understanding of the workings of the universe has grown to a cosmic scale. It should then come as no surprise that he's also gifted with enhanced senses, hearing, and vision, enabling him to read atoms, which in conjunction with the superhuman intellect allows him to generate and manipulate various energies to create anything from virtually nothing. He has perfected reality alteration to the point that he can essentially create and destroy universes at his whim. And the more Dr. Manhattan has learned, the more seemingly impossible things he's mastered, from traveling to other realities to experimenting with them. So now that we know that he can do virtually anything, let's dive into the philosophical perspective that guides his decision making and see if we can understand what makes him tick. Yes, John. Good. Now it's just a question of reassembling the components in the correct sequence. The thing about Manhattan is that he doesn't appear to embody much of an ethical system because morality doesn't affect him. You have to stop this. Everyone will die. And the universe will not even notice. He's referring to himself as a universe here, by the way. He even stated, a live body and dead body contain the same number of particles. Structurally, there's no discernible difference. Life and death are unquantifiable abstracts. Why should I be concerned? Why would I save a world I no longer have any stake in? My red world here, now, means more to me than your blue one. Throughout Watchmen, we see glimpses of the underlying philosophy that drives the main characters. It's not so much a conflict of power, but a struggle of morality and philosophical perspectives that drives the narrative. Ozymandias believes in utilitarianism and consequentialism. He thinks that every action should be judged by the merit of their consequences. Thus, the best course of action is the one that yields the most utility and reduces the most suffering. In his mind, the end justified the means, which is why to avert a nuclear apocalypse, he destroys New York City and pins it on Dr. Manhattan, thereby uniting humanity in their fear and hatred of him. Rorschach is a moral absolutist that abides by the deontologist slogan of, let justice be done, though the heaven may fall. He believes the outcome doesn't matter, what matters is doing the right thing, which is why he's willing to let the world know what Ozymandias did, despite knowing that that would most likely lead to the end of the world. Night Owl and Silk Spectre are altruist, stoic, and virtue ethicists. The comedian is an absurdist, nihilist, hedonist, and egoist all wrapped into one. He thinks the efforts to find meaning in the universe will always fail because there is no meaning. Believing there was no point to creation, he started taking enjoyment in destruction. But Dr. Manhattan, the only hero with powers, unlimited powers of that, subscribes to relativism and nihilism, and has clicked a notification icon on materialism with neutral indifference. Despite having the capacity of changing the world for the better, with a single thought, he works mindlessly for the US government as its plaything, doing its bidding without purpose. His reasoning. We're all puppets, Laurie. I'm just the puppet who can see the strings. Manhattan pushes the idea of fate being set in stone. Because he experiences the past, present, and future all at once, he's unable to see the world as anything but immutable and unyielding to outside forces. His knowledge and perspective essentially rob him from the possibility of individual agency. And so, ironically, despite having the power to do anything, he still thinks he's powerless against the flow of time. In his essay, The Human Stain, Chaos and the Rage for Order in Watchmen, comic book analyst Brian D. Dietrich noted that Manhattan cannot see himself because he is all selves and all truths, all possibility and all reason. He too acts on what must be, a singular, if infinite vision of right and wrong. Throughout the story, there are countless examples of where he could have stopped murders from happening, something he's very capable of doing, but he allows them to occur. You could have turned the gun into steam, the bullets into mercury, the, the bottle into goddamn snowflakes, but you didn't, did you? You really don't give a damn about human beings. This makes us think that he doesn't care about humanity, but he then ultimately kills his friend Rorschach to stop the death of billions of people in a nuclear war. While Rorschach is stubbornly unrelenting, pursuing moral justice with tunnel vision, Manhattan cannot help but see a more complicated universe around him. One that doesn't have an unchanging sense of right and wrong, because he's aware of how a single decision can ripple far beyond the present. Therefore, it makes sense that he cannot afford to make decisions based on the uncompromising nature of moral absolutism like Rorschach. 
Instead of making decisions based on a right or wrong, he weighs his options according to whether the outcome of the event is important or trivial in the grand cosmic sense, which is why he can simultaneously ignore the death of a few innocent people while dedicating every ounce of his being to preventing a nuclear apocalypse. As Einstein would say, it's all relative. His morality and simultaneous lack thereof are informed by a distinct view of the world that only he can see. There is no future, there is no past, do you see? Time is simultaneous, an intricately structured jewel that humans insist on viewing one edge at a time, when the whole design is visible in every facet. With that said, that's all for today folks. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. You understand, don't you? Without condoning or condemning. I understand.